Hello and welcome to my channel. In this video, we are going to solve the 8th question from CIE IGCAC 058041, extended paper from October November 2024. Now, this question is from algebra and functions f of x is equal to 7 minus 3x, g of x is equal to x square minus 16. Find the values of x when g of x is equal to 20. Now, we can see that two functions are given that is f of x and g of x. Now, in the first question, they have asked us to find out the values of x if the value of g of x is given as 20. So, here we are going to consider the function g of x and in place of g of x, we are going to plug in the value as 20. So, here we have written x square minus 16 is equal to 20. Now, let us take negative 16 on the other side of equal to sign. So, we get x square is equal to 20, negative 16 becomes positive 16. So, x square will be equal to 20 plus 16 which gives us 36. Now, let us take square on the other side of the equal to sign. We get x is equal to plus or minus square root of 36. That is when we send the square on the other side of equal to sign, it turns into plus or minus square root. So, the square root of 36 is 6. So, we have two values of x here that is positive 6 or negative 6. So, let us write here the values of x when g of x is equal to 20 are x is equal to 6 or x is equal to negative 6. Now, let us move on to the next sub question. Find f inverse of x. Now, let us consider this equation 7 minus 3x. So, let me write here. So, this was f of x given as 7 minus 3x. Now, in place of f of x, I have considered y. So, the equation becomes y is equal to 7 minus 3x. Now, in the next step, I am going to swap the places of x and y. That is, x takes the place of y and y takes the place of x. So, our new equation becomes x is equal to 7 minus 3y. That is, by swapping the places of x and y. Now, once we swap the positions, let us again try to make y as the subject. That is, let us take minus 3y on the other side of the equal to sign. So, negative 3y becomes positive 3y. And in place of minus 3y, x takes its position. So, we get 3y is equal to 7 minus x. Now, here, since we are trying to get y as the subject, let us send 3 on the other side of equal to sign. So, y will be equal to 7 minus x divided by 3. So, this is the f inverse of x or inverse function of f. So, let us write here f inverse of x is equal to 7 minus x over 3. Now, let us move on to the next sub question. Find g of f of x plus 1 giving your answer in its simplest form. So, let us focus on g of f of x first. So, g of f of x means the f of x value needs to be substituted wherever there is x in g of x. So, here in place of f of x, we have written 7 minus 3x. And in the next step, you can see that wherever there is x in g of x, we have replaced x with 7 minus 3x. So, here we get g of f of x as 7 minus 3x the whole square minus 16. Now, in the next step, we are going to expand this bracket. And to expand this, I am going to make use of an algebraic identity, which is a minus b the whole square is equal to a square minus 2ab plus b square. Now, here 7 minus 3x the whole square is in the form a minus b the whole square, where a represents 7 and b represents 3x. So, making use of this identity, we are going to expand this bracket as 7 square minus 2 times 7 times 3x plus 3x the whole square minus 16. Now, let us simplify this equation. So, 7 square is 49 minus 2 times 7 is 14 and 14 times 3 gives us 42. So, we get minus 42x plus 3 square is 9. So, 9x square minus 16. Now, simplifying this and rearranging, we get g of f of x as 9x square minus 42x and 49 minus 16 gives us positive 33. So, this is the value of g of f of x. But here we need to find g of f of x plus 1. So, let us write here g of f of x plus 1. So, g of x we have got this equation that is 9x square minus 42x plus 33 plus 1. 
Now simplifying this equation we get 9x square minus 42x, 33 plus 1 gives us 34. So this is the simplest form in which we can write g of f of x plus 1. On the axis, sketch the graph of y is equal to g of x. On your sketch, indicate the values where the graph crosses the axis. So here it is given that y is equal to g of x and g of x was given as x square minus 16. So let us write the equation as y is equal to g of x and g of x is x square minus 16. So the equation becomes y is equal to x square minus 16. And you can see that I have written here this is going to be a u-shaped parabola. It is going to be a u-shaped parabola because the coefficient of x square is positive. So the graph is going to look somewhat this way. If the coefficient of x square was negative, then you were going to get a n-shaped graph or n-shaped parabola. So now, once we have understood that the shape of parabola is going to be u-shaped, let us focus on the intercepts of the graph, starting with finding the x-intercepts. So to find out the x-intercepts, that is the points or the coordinates on the x-axis, the y-coordinate is going to be 0. So here we are going to substitute y equal to 0 in this equation. So we get x square minus 16 is equal to 0. Now let us take negative 16 on the other side of equal to sign. So we get x square is equal to positive 16. Next we are going to send the square on the other side of equal to sign. So x will be equal to plus or minus square root of 16. So square becomes square root here. So here we get two values of x that is x equal to positive 4 or x equal to negative 4 because square root of 16 is 4. So these are the two values of x intercepts we have got. So let us mark it over here now. So x is equal to negative 4 will be over here. So let us write here negative 4 and x equal to positive 4. So it's going to be equal distance from 0. So here it's going to be positive 4. Now once we have got this, let us find out the y intercept. So here we have written y intercepts. And since the y-intercept lies on the y-axis, the x-coordinate is going to be 0. So we have written here substitute x equal to 0 in this equation. So y will be equal to 0 square minus 16 or y that is y-intercept is going to be negative 16. So somewhere around here it will be negative 16. Now once we have got the x-intercepts and the y-intercept, let us take the vertex or the turning point of the parabola. So let us first find out the x coordinate of the vertex and for that we are going to add the x intercept which we have got and divide it by 2. So here we have written to find out the x coordinate of the vertex, add the x intercepts that is negative 4 plus 4 and divide it by 2. So here we get negative 4 plus 4 over 2 as 0. So the x coordinate of the vertex is 0 which means it lies on the y axis. So negative 16 becomes the turning point because when x is 0 we can see that y is equal to negative 16. So the graph or the parabola is going to turn at negative 16 only. So let us draw a smooth curve now. So here it looks this way that is it is a u-shaped parabola. So negative 4 and positive 4 are the x-intercepts and negative 16 is the y-intercept and it also acts as a turning point of this graph. Now let us move on to the next sub-question. Find the equation of the tangent to the graph of y is equal to g of x when x is equal to negative 3. Give your answer in the form y is equal to mx plus c. Now here since again y is equal to g of x is given, let us consider the equation g of x is equal to x square minus 16. Now since y is equal to g of x is given, we have written here y is equal to x square minus 16. Now since we need to get the equation of the tangent in the form y is equal to mx plus c, let us begin by finding the value of the gradient m. And for that we are going to differentiate the given equation for y that is y is equal to x square minus 16. So to find out the gradient or slope of the graph that is m, we are going to differentiate y with respect to x. So we have written here dy by dx is equal to now differentiating x square with respect to x, we are going to make use of the power rule over here. That is the power of x comes down and multiplies with x. So we have written here 2x and the power of x reduces by 1. So here 2 minus 1 gives us the power of x as 1. So the differentiation of x square becomes 2x. And differentiation of a constant term is always 0. 
and negative 16 is a constant. So, differentiation of negative 16 gives us 0. So, we have not written anything over here. So, the gradient m will be equal to 2x. Now, they have given us the value of x over here as negative 3. So, let us find out the value of gradient at x equal to negative 3. So, plugging in the value as negative 3, we get m is equal to 2 times negative 3, which is equal to negative 6. So, here in this y is equal to mx plus c, we have got the value of m as negative 6. Now, let us focus on finding the value of y. And to find out the value of y at x equal to negative 3, we are going to again make use of this equation of graph that is y is equal to x square minus 16. So, when x is equal to negative 3, y will be equal to negative 3 square minus 16. Negative 3 square is positive 9, so 9 minus 16. So, the value of y at x equal to negative 3 is going to be negative 7. That is 9 minus 16 gives us negative 7. Now, we have the value of y, we have the value of m and we have the value of x with us. So, let us try to find out the y-intercept that is c in this equation. So, rewriting the equation y is equal to mx plus c, y value we got it as negative 7. So, negative 7 is equal to m value is negative 6, x value is negative 3 plus c. So, simplifying this we get negative 7 is equal to negative 6 times negative 3 gives us positive 18 plus c. Now, taking 18 on the other side of equal to sign, we get the value of c that is the y-intercept as negative 7 and positive 18 becomes negative 18. So, adding these two values, we get negative 25. So, this is the value of y-intercept. Now, we have to just plug in the value of m and c in this equation to get the equation of tangent. So, here we have written y is equal to, in place of m, we have written its value negative 6. So, negative 6x and the value of c is negative 25. So, this is the equation of the tangent we need. So, let us write here y is equal to negative 6x, negative 25. Equation of the tangent. h of x is equal to 3 to the power of x. On the axis, sketch the graph of y is equal to h of x. Now here, whenever we are drawing a graph, we need to find out the x-intercepts and y-intercepts. So let us first find out the x-intercept over here. So here we have written, to find the x-intercepts, substitute y equal to 0 and y is equal to h of x. So y will be equal to 3 to the power of x. Now since we have put y is equal to 0 to find out the x-intercepts, we get 3 to the power of x is equal to 0. Now, we have to check which value of x gives us the value 0. So, here we can say that there is no value of x that is 3 to the power of any value does not give us 0, which means we do not have any x-intercepts for this given function. The graph is never going to cut the x-axis. Now, let us try to find out if there are any y-intercepts. So, here we have written y-intercept and to find out the y-intercept, we have to substitute x is equal to 0. So, y is equal to 3 to the power of x and substituting the value of x as 0, we get y is equal to 3 to the power of 0. And 3 raised to 0 or any number raised to a power of 0 gives us 1, which means that the graph is going to cut the y-axis at y is equal to 1. Now, since we have got the y-intercept, let us just mark maybe 1 is over here. So, let us write here 1. Now, let us find out some values of the graph to draw a smooth curve and let us see how it looks and for that I am going to make use of a small table this way. Now you can see I have taken some values of x. You can take minimum 6 or 7 values to get a smooth curve. So I have taken some values from the negative x axis and some from the positive x axis. So x I have started as negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2 and 3. You can add the values if you want or you can reduce the values as well, but keep minimum of 6 values of x to get a smooth curve. Now here, since I have taken x is equal to negative 3, we are going to plug in the value of x as negative 3 and see what will be the value of y. I have already written the values over here, so let us confirm the values once again. So 3 to the power of negative 3 will give us the value of y as 1 over 27 or writing it as a decimal, we get it as 0.037 recurring. So, rounding it to two decimal places, I have written it as 0.04. Now, let us check for 3 to the power of negative 2. So, this will give us 1 over 9 or in decimals, it is going to be 0.1 recurring. 
So again rounding it to two decimal places I have written it as 0 0.11. So in a similar way you can just plug in the values of different values of x and get different values of y. Now let us begin by plotting these values on the graph. So this is negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2 and 3. Now starting with the first value when x is negative 3, y is 0 0.04. So it's going to be pretty near to this x axis that is very close to negative 3. So let us mark it over here, just below 1. So for negative 2 we have 0 0.11, so it will be a little higher than 0 0.04, so maybe it is over here. So at negative 1 it is going to be 0 0.33, so a little higher than the previous value. And at 0 it is going to be 1 over here. At 1 it is going to be 3, little higher than this value, so maybe it is over here. So for 2 it is going to be a, a bit higher than this, and for 3 it goes at 27. So now just connect the points to get a smooth curve. So it should look somewhat this way. So you have to show clearly that the y-intercept is at 1. Now moving on to the last question. Write down the equation of the asymptote to the graph of y is equal to h of x. The asymptote is a line which tries to approach the graph infinitely but never crosses it. So here we can see that this graph is trying to approach the x-axis but it never cuts it because we can see that it doesn't have any x-intercept. So here our x-axis becomes the asymptote because this is a straight line which is trying to approach this graph or trying to cut this graph but the graph never cuts it. So the graph keeps on going parallel to the x-axis forever. So here our asymptote becomes the x-axis. So the equation of the x-axis is going to be y is equal to 0. I hope you have understood all the steps and liked the video. And if you found this video useful, then check out these videos where you'll find more examples of this kind. And if you're liking my videos, like, share and subscribe to my channel. And thank you for watching.